All right, gang, in this final exercise of the chapter, I'm going to show you yet another way to modify your gradient map. This time, not by meticulously editing color stops, but rather by taking something that's more or less in keeping with what you want and then blending it in with that black and white composite using a combination of blend mode and opacity. And the process goes more quickly, but you have to wrap your mind around it a little bit as well. So I've saved my changes as subtle ski resort.psd because after all, we've applied a more subtle colorization effect. And I'm going to go ahead and switch inside the adjustments panel. I'm going to switch back from this subtle 15th gradient that we've created, low sat complement, back to complementary VY in order to reapply that garish effect that we had before. And let's try to make it work as opposed to editing every single color stop. Let's just work here inside the layers panel. I'll go ahead and collapse the adjustments panel for a moment by double clicking to the right of the mask tab. And then I'm going to change that blend mode. And one way to change the blend mode is to choose color. So if you're having problems getting the luminance levels right, and you're either darkening the image or you're brightening the image and you're getting frustrated by the whole thing, then just go ahead and choose color and you'll accept the original luminance levels inside the underlying image and you'll apply the color from the gradient map effect. So you won't have to worry about all that luminance adjustment anymore. So I'll turn that colorized layer off. We have this grayscale effect right there. I turn it on and we have this colorized effect. And you do have to note that you are adding saturation to the mix. So you may see a little bit of darkening despite the fact that you're choosing color and you're accepting the original luminance levels. But the darkening effect shouldn't be too onerous. Anyway, that's one way to work. Another way to work is to take advantage of one of these contrast modes here, overlay through linear light. Although my guess is that either overlay or soft light is going to best suit your purposes. So I'll go ahead and choose overlay and we get this effect here, which is pretty cool. Now we just lost a ton of color there, but we have such rich luminance action going on now inside of this image. Compare that to the flat black and white photograph. That is the no color black and white photograph. And just imagine adding this color to the mix and outputting that to your inkjet printer, how many rich luminance levels you're going to have available to you. Same thing if you're reproducing the image commercially using all four process colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, you're going to get a rich array of luminance levels. Now, we're over darkening the effect at this point. So we could back it off if we wanted to. I could reduce the opacity, say, to 60% and decide whether I like that effect better. Or I could go ahead and even switch down to the soft light mode. Now I'm going to lose more color when I do that. However, once again, we still have a lot of color going on inside of this image. It's just basically under the radar at this point. We're not screaming, hey, I've got a colorized image. Look at it. It's a big sepia tone. Instead, we're creating a super high quality duotone image that's going to print super successfully. And again, it's going to look like a wonderfully rich black and white image. And again, this combination here of soft light and 60% works really well where this particular image is concerned. So this is the standard black and white, plain black and white version of the image. And this is the subtly colorized version of the image filled in with soft light and an opacity level of 60%. Now, I know some of you are just begging, hey, so we've seen what you can do here using gradient map along with the big sky panorama. What about those goth women that we've lost track of for like two or three full exercises now? Well, let's go ahead and switch back to them. And I've saved the most recent version of this image as sepia tint red frock.psd because we applied that really frankly lame sepia effect using black and white. That tint checkbox. I just don't really approve of it at all. Again, easy to apply, but what is easy now? I mean, you've seen what we can do. So let's go ahead and switch things out. Now, what's interesting about this is I don't even have to turn off that sepia checkbox that's associated with black and white there. So if I double click on the thumbnail for the black and white adjustment layer, tint is turned on. Who cares? I could turn it off if I want to, but I don't need to because gradient map is going to override it. So instead, what I'm going to do is click this left pointing arrow head in the bottom left corner of the adjustments panel to return to my list. I'll click the fourth icon in the third row, which is gradient map, or at least I'll alt click on it so that I can name that layer and I'll call it colorize. 
And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And let's switch to this guy right there. He actually works out beautifully for this image. Earth Tone Reflect. And when I first select it, it gives you these weird little sort of green shadow details inside the image, which you might have fun with. Actually, you could go ahead and pull those out if you wanted to. In other words, I could click on this gradient bar and then I could go ahead and lengthen the zone that's covered by those green shadows, essentially. And so I end up getting this effect here, which has a certain sort of function where these particular people are concerned. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and escape out because I think actually the best effect for this image is to change the blend mode here from normal to something like, once again, soft light in order to achieve this effect here. And then I'm going to press the escape key so that the soft light option is no longer active. And I'll press the five key to reduce the opacity value to 50%. And actually that might be a little low. So I'll type in six, six for 66% opacity to raise that up a little bit. And not only does that give us a better effect overall, but it also helps to blend the frock into the image that much better. So let's go ahead and fill the screen with these images, why don't we? I'm going to go ahead and press Shift F to go directly to the fill screen mode and zoom in on this image a little bit here so that we can take it in. So this is the big sky panorama, incidentally, subject to that complementary VY gradient set to the soft light blend mode, 60% opacity. And this is our just gorgeous women that have been with us throughout this entire lesson now, set to the earth tone reflect. I think it's called that gradient, soft light, opacity, 66%. All right, so there you have it. We've learned how to mix our own custom black and white images using either the channel mixer adjustment or the black and white adjustment. I've also shown you the best way to infuse colors into your black and white photographs, and that is using gradient map.